The last time Nebraska opened the season 0-3 was back in 2018 during Scott Frost's first year, and now Matt Rule is trying to avoid a similar fate. Since 2017, group of five teams are 3-5 and five in Lincoln, and Northern Illinois left Memorial Stadium a four-point winner just six years ago. It's been a shaky start with too many turnovers, too many missed blocks, and a defensive effort that hasn't been strong enough to get it done on their own. But now they're the favorite, and the expectation for the first home game is to come out on top. Thomas Hammock led his team into Boston College just two weeks ago, and they played spoiler in overtime to start off 1-0. And after losing to their rival by only three, they're ready to fight for a win in another one-score game. Northern Illinois has seen this team's flaws and thinks they can pull the upset. So today, we'll talk about how Matt Rule can avoid that, and I'll give you my game preview and final score prediction. But what's up, guys? I'm Connor Hayden, and this is Corn Craze. If you're a fan of Nebraska or the Big Ten, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss my live reaction right after the game. And if you think Nebraska will win the home opener, hit the like button and help us get to 1,000. But now, let's get into it. Thompson lines up, goes deep, he's got a man, touchdown! When schools from the Power Five play anybody from a smaller conference, the expectation isn't just to win, it's to win big. This week there are 23 Power Five versus Group of Five matchups, and only four of those have spreads of seven or less. Schools like Nebraska have to pay more than a million dollars to smaller schools to come take what's supposed to be a beating so the bigger school can use it as a warm-up before conference play starts. And since I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to ask, the reason they don't have to pay that fee to Power 5 schools is because they schedule a home and away series so they can both make money on a home game. But here's the problem. Nebraska's been so bad that these expensive scrimmages aren't free wins anymore. Going 5-3 and three in these games when you're supposed to go 8-0 and o is usually the difference between making or missing a bowl game. Northern Illinois has been a great G5 team to schedule. Typically, they're made up of Big Ten players, and they're competitive in their conference, so they're a challenging enough opponent to test any team. In the last nine years, they've beaten Northwestern, taken number one Ohio State down to the wire and lost by seven, beat Nebraska, beat Georgia Tech, and two weeks ago, they took down a potential bowl team in Boston College. Nebraska's third game last season was just like this one, at home, at night against Georgia Southern as a three-touchdown favorite, and we all know how that one ended. There's still a path to making a bowl game, but to get there, losing on Saturday isn't an option. In the Monday presser, Matt Rule said Jeff Sims is QB1, and the only reason that would change right now is if he was injured and couldn't go, which to me means that he doesn't think Harburg's ready to take over, and he doesn't think he can execute at the same level that he thinks Sims can. I totally understand why the staff wouldn't want to make a change after investing this much time in building the offense around him and what his skill set is, but the question is, at what point are the turnovers too much? How many more drop snaps are they going to let slide before they say enough's enough? Harburg starting this week is still up in the air since Sims is recovering from the ankle injury, but if he's healthy enough to play, Rule's going to send him out there to take the first snaps against Northern Illinois. But my guess is that they're going to sit him this week to make sure he's 100% healthy before they bring him back. I was listening to Adam Carricker's interview with Tommy Frazier on his channel, and his take was that Sims is the starter because he's the best athlete on the field, but the turnover issues are all mental and a lack of focus on the snap. He had some other good things to say about what he's seen so far, so if you haven't had a chance to check that interview out, you can head over to Character Chronicles on YouTube and you'll be able to see it there. I thought Gabe Irvin and Ben Scott taking accountability in their presser really showed us what the new culture in the locker room is. Irvin said it was on him for not taking the handoff, and Scott said the offense's issues were on the entire unit as a whole and not just their quarterback. Whether it's more on him or more on other guys in the group doesn't really matter because they're all going to do whatever it takes and they're all going to take responsibility to come together and figure out how to solve it. I get a lot of messages asking how to support the channel, and the easiest ways are to share my videos with more Nebraska fans and hit the subscribe button. But if you want another way, I've got a merch site. So if you want to get stickers, wristbands, a shirt, a hoodie, the link's in the description box below, or you can go to corncraze.com and you'll find it all there. I just put seven hoodies in the mail today, so if you ordered in the last few days, you're going to get those by next week. 
starting off with Minnesota on the road and then a rivalry game against Colorado who brought in some of the best transfers in the country was probably the worst possible opener that this staff could have asked for. But now things are going to get easier. They get three home games in a row, and the first two are easier matchups to get the rest of the kinks out before Michigan comes to Lincoln at the end of the month. Nebraska hasn't won a home game since the last October when Indiana came in and got beat down 35-21. to It was at night, coming off two losses, but fans still brought great energy and made sure the team felt the home field advantage. The last big game of Memorial Stadium was for volleyball just two weeks ago, and if the team comes out and plays as well as we'd expect them to, the energy will be just as good this weekend. We'll start with NIU's offense versus Nebraska's D. The hype in the offseason was that they were returning four starters on a line that ranked 10th nationally in sacks and helped their running backs average almost five yards a carry. Three of them made the All-Mac team, and Rocky Lombardi coming back from injury after only playing four games last year would make the foundation of the offense a force. Well, two games in, and the offense that ranks 93rd nationally only averages 4.6 yards a play, which is still better than Iowa, but they gave up four sacks to an FCS school last week. The run game was decent against Boston College with two backs going for 53 and 61 yards, but Southern Illinois completely shut him down and forced Lombardi to throw it. If you look back to the Michigan State game in 2018 when Nebraska won 9-6 in the snow, their quarterback was inconsistent and he was prone to turnovers. He finished off 15-41 passing with 53 yards on the ground, an interception, and a fumble. That was Rocky Lombardi, and although he looks like a Power 5 level starter at times, he throws bad balls into tight coverage, misses on short routes, and takes sacks that he doesn't need to. He's turned it over four times in two games and only completed 54% of his passes, so although he's in his sixth year, the results are mixed. Nebraska's 72nd ranked D would actually be in the top 50 if they weren't put in so many bad positions, and their 11 sacks in two games ties for first nationally with Tennessee. Southern Illinois got creative with their blitzes and finished with four sacks and 11 tackles for loss, so I can only imagine what's going to happen now that they're facing real speed and a coordinator who knows his unit has to hold offenses to less than 14 points to guarantee they win these games. The Blackshirts only have two takeaways so far, but this team's turnover prone and they're only going to get more susceptible if they have to take shots while they play from behind. On defense, NIU faced a dual threat QB at Boston College who threw for 138 and averaged 7.5 yards of carry. I know Matt Rule said he thought they had a really strong D line, but if that's what he thinks their strength is, I'd feel really optimistic about the run game since they gave up over five yards of carry to three running backs at Southern Illinois. Nebraska's got some liabilities on the O line who could get exploited, but a drive killer in both games were the false starts, and playing at home should cut those out finally. The ultimate drive killer, as you know, are the fumbled snaps. I'm guessing Harburg starts this week because they're going to want Sims to be at 100% by Michigan, but no matter who is back there at QB, I'd expect the focus to be on catching the snap and locking in on the little things before they try to make any plays. It's funny, I'd usually look at a defense to try and understand how good they are at bringing pressure, how talented their corners are, and how well they tackled, but based on these first two games, none of that matters. It's Nebraska versus Nebraska still. They can make anybody look like an NFL D if they don't get out of their own way, and until they master the fundamentals, defense and special teams are the only two units I'd consider positive difference makers at this point. Let's look at the betting line for this game, because for the first time this year, Nebraska's listed as a favorite. But before we do, I want to make sure that if you do want to bet on any college or any NFL games this weekend, that you have the opportunity to. Our sponsor for today's video is BroThrow, which is my go-to platform for betting on games because it's available in all 50 states. It doesn't require a deposit. There are no minimums or withdrawal requirements. And most importantly, you don't pay a 10% VIG since it's not a sports book. We had over 300 Corn Cray subscribers use BroThrow to bet on college and NFL games last week. So if you want to bet on spreads, totals, and money lines with better odds than any other site you use, you can join us for free at brothrow.com slash GBR to start saving on the juice today. I've seen the line for this game bounce from 10 to 12, and now it sits at Nebraska minus 11. 
Northern Illinois started the year against a Power 5 team as an 8-point dog and went on the road to win that outright. But the very next week, they were a touchdown favorite and couldn't even hit the money line against the FCS school they played. Their inconsistency reminds me of Nebraska. They've got some good players, but it doesn't all click together at the same time. Rocky Lombardi looks like a pro one week, then an inaccurate turnover machine the very next. Neither of these offenses can be trusted, and the most consistent unit on the field is going to be Nebraska's defense, who tackles well, gets to the QB, and always goes for turnovers. The total set at 43, and with a defense that knows they have to limit scoring if they want to win, and an offense that's still trying to find their footing, I love the under in a must-win home game. Watching the opener and the first half of last week gave me a lot of reasons to be optimistic for this season, but when things got carried away at Colorado and it felt like Rule had no solution to the basic issues this team struggles with, it made me question how many games they could win if they continued to play the way they have been. Starting off against more polished teams made Nebraska look worse than they actually are, and the confidence they've been lacking might finally show up when they play in front of their home crowd. I wouldn't call this game an upset waiting to happen, but if we see the same team come out this week that we did in Boulder, it's going to be another one-score game because Northern Illinois is going to play the best game of their lives since they're in front of 90,000 on national TV. To score on Nebraska's D, Lombardi's going to have to throw it, and his 32-26 to TD to interception ratio means that Nebraska's DBs are going to have multiple opportunities at picks. The Colorado game was competitive until they took a 13-point lead and Nebraska had no way to climb out of that hole, so keeping it within seven all game is going to be Tony White's number one priority. Even if the offense struggles to score, the field position should be decent and Alvano will have a few chances to redeem himself and show why he was given the job. And for that reason alone, I'm taking Nebraska to win this week 23-13 in a field goal heavy game from both sides that never gets out of hand but never feels close enough to make us uncomfortable. It's hard to predict how dynamic the offense will be with a new starting quarterback in his first game playing meaningful snaps, but if they just expect him to hand it off and throw short passes over the middle, he should be okay. Nebraska could turn it over twice this week, and I think they'll still be in position to win by 10, but the D has to play the way they have been so far to make sure it never gets out of control and NIU never gets to play with a real lead. But I want to know what you think, so let me know in the comments below. If Harburg starts, plays well, and wins this game, do you think the staff is going to consider letting him play more in the next one? Is a convincing win this week enough to make you believe six wins is still on the table? Can Nebraska's leading rusher finally go over 100 yards on the day, or do they want to keep spreading the carries around? If Gabe Irvin or Amir Johnson's ever going to hit that 100-yard mark, this is the week to do it, but they'll need to break off a few big ones if Anthony Grant gets back in the mix this week, because those carries are going to get split up even more. But that's all I've got for today, so until next time, thank you for being here, and I'll see you in the next one. Go Big Red.